All right, everybody, welcome to Brighter. So a new report just dropped showing the current state of the transition of electric vehicles. Today, we're gonna show you loads and loads of graphs and information. The most exciting is the projections of when electric vehicles will overtake gas cars. There are projections from many different organizations and we're gonna see how your forecast compared to that. The other very important new information is to see by country and by vehicle type, when will EVs cost the same or lower than gas cars? Today we have Jeff Lutz joining us. Jeff is a C-level executive uh, supply chain executive with previous Fortune 100 companies and is currently running his own consulting firm. Welcome, Jeff. Great to be with you, Herbert. This is good info. It's going to be good info. Lots of great charts. <clears throat> this one is my favorite chart. This is my favorite chart. Take a look at this. So this is, <clears throat> you know, the projection of when you think the EV sales will overtake ICE cars. So this is a organization called Rocky Mountain Institute. They're a nonprofit orga organization producing reports on sustainable energy, and they just dropped their report, which is fantastic. So this is, when do you think that EV sales will overtake ICE cars, right? So 2026 to 2030, 28, uh, that's when they think it is. But let's take a look at this. So you can see that on the bottom left, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> is the uh, actuals. Of what's actually happening those blue dots going up the line right so here we are 20 in 2020 one in 25 cars sold is an ev and then by 2023 which is where we're at today one in five is already sold as an ev okay so that's actual then you can see that there is this potential one line they call fast that's the kind of just a, a normal straight line going up and another one they call faster it's a little bit more of an exponential curve going upwards so those are the two potential and then at the same time, you can see the ICE vehicles up here. They're actually, you can actually see already by 2023, a reduction in sales of ICE cars. Every time there's a new EV sold, people are not buying the ICE cars. And I, my mind is very clear. <clears throat> EVs are better cars and everybody wants to buy better uh, EVs instead. So there's a decline and eventually it will die off. So if you look at the fast, it's a straight line going down and the faster. So if you combine the fast uh, with each other, the, the 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 crossover is in 2028. That is when, that's when uh, at that point EV sales will overtake ICE cars. But if you look at the faster, if you really believe that it's going to be the faster lines, then it's it could happen right here in 2026. And that's in three years. In three years, you're going to get more sales, equal sales between the two. Uh, what's your thought on these charts? Yeah, this is what I, this is a great chart and shout out to Tesla Boomer Mama, uh, Alexander Mertz for sharing this um, on X and with us. One of the things that people don't realize is as EV grows, non-EV erodes. And when a, vol when, a, when a volume set is eroding, their cogs are naturally eroding unless there's an event that occurs where there's some meaningful simplification in in for in this case of ice if there's some way to take the cost structure down or there's some sort of incentives or government intervention um to help it and so some of that may occur but i don't see governments necessarily incentivizing ice so one of the key takeaways i have is that that's a volume curve that we're looking at on that chart but what's going to happen is, is the actual business of building ICE vehicles is going to erode at the same time. And when the business is eroding and you're doing these, you know, three and five year capital um, planning sessions and where you're going to invest money, where are investors are going to invest? Well, they're going to, they want capital to go, they want CapEx and capital to go into something that's going to grow. And that's going to be EVs. So, uh, I think the key takeaway for me is the cost structure of ICE is going to actually assist in its volume decline. And for me, that's the big, and, and, and inversely, the same thing's going to happen with EV. The COGS improvement is actually going to help its acceleration and growth. And EVs are simpler products. Once you understand, you know, once you get the technology understood, you could build an you can build an EV with fewer parts and you build there's fewer mechanical moving parts than an ICE vehicle. So once once companies do figure out how to do that, there will be at a lower cost structure than the ICE counterparts they may have been building before. But that transition is going to take time. So 
Cogs decline. For me, the big takeaway is the cogs decline may actually drive the volume decline in ice. Nice. Okay, I'm just looking at the uh, report here. And um, they basically say that there's so many drivers of change that they've been following. And they call it the, the end of the ice age. The, and, they, and they specifically have pointed out uh, that it's exponential change. This isn't just regular kind of change. And so there's like all these different drivers, right? So there's lower costs. There's policy decisions made by countries and cities. Um, there's a capacity build out. So almost every car manufacturer is now building factories to build uh, EVs. These, the, the Chinese leadership has really pushed the industry forward. They're leading the charge at 30% of all sales are now electric vehicles and the incentives that they're doing. Um, and uh, yeah, so there's a, then becomes a feedback loop. And so they just explained all the reasons why that is. And here's an example of one of the cost declines is this is the cost of the battery pack, which we know was the biggest issue. So this is a really nice chart to explain it to you that in 2010, it was very expensive. Um, dollars per kilowatt hours was way up here, 2010, and now we're way down here. So that you can see that it's from, what does it look like, around under 200 to over 1,200? So that's a six times decline. And that's really what is, um, you know, one of the drivers because the battery is the most expensive part of the car of an electric vehicle. This is another great uh, table, a chart to show you that you know, 2020, 5% of all global cars sold <clears throat> was um, electric. And then it, 9%, so it's almost like a doubling, right? And then 50% uh, wow, growth, 50% growth. So we're talking or a little bit slightly less in 2023, but that we have a big recession going on. So 18% of all cars sold today is an EV. That's, that's already passed. That, and then up here, this is the people who are planning to buy an EV. Uh, thoughts on this? Yeah, if you go back to the prior chart, I, I actually think the 2022 number is a little bit high. I mean, that may have been an early part of the year. Um, I, I think it's closer to you know somewhere in the you know maybe 110 dollar per kilowatt hour range, and, and maybe at 120. And what's what's going to happen in the United States is for every 120 dollars per kilowatt hour that that tesla or if somebody else decides to build batteries in north america you know the government is going to give them back um the 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 35 dollars uh, per kilowatt hour at the cell level and the 10 dollars per kilowatt hour at the pack level so they're going to get basically back a third of roughly where that chart is where i think it is closer to the 120 dollar per kilowatt they're going to get a third of it back uh in in rebates and incentives to build out so that I, I just can't underscore how big the ira the implications of the ira are and right now it's tesla panasonic uh in the u.s doing most of the battery production but soon again we got a good data point on the 20 millionth cell of the 4680 recently if that accelerates i mean i don't i don't know if people are properly modeling you know the amount of battery production. Tesla is really intent on, on driving this up significantly. So I think that's one thing is just the, the incentives piece uh, is going to help drive that cost per kilowatt hour down. And then the amount of capacity coming online has been gigantic, you know, cattle, BYD, um, and hopefully eventually Tesla, Samsung, SK, LG. So that battery, that battery decline curve is going to continue. And then on the on the next page on the curve regarding um, EV uh, adoption rate, and then the folks planning to purchase an EV, there was an article from Yahoo that came out that, and this is you know that every time somebody does one of these surveys, there you know there's some you know different error. There's a different survey population, but it was interesting when Yahoo put the survey out. They said more people are not willing to buy an EV. I think the number they had was, I think it was around 45% that were looking at their next car being an EV. And the way they titled the article was 55% more, you know, more people don't actually don't want an EV. But when you actually look at it in context, that's why that graph is so, is so wonderful. If only 18%, well, in this case, this was a US survey. So only 8% of the people are buying an EV 
but 45% want to buy an EV, that just shows you the adoption curve. That's the magnet for the whole thing. It's going to continue to grow. And if you're investing in EV, you're investing in a company like Tesla, that EV adoption curve is what you want to see. And you want to see those surveys that say, you know, more than, you know, five times the number of people that are actually buying an EV today in the United States actually want an EV. You want to see those surveys. So that's a great chart. Very great chart. A <clears throat> couple more really good charts to cover <clears throat> is this one, sticker price parity in key markets. Now, you and I have looked at this and we're kind of confused, uh, but basically they're looking at four different kinds of vehicle types. So S is small, M is medium, L is large, and SUV sport utility vehicle. <clears throat> and then you're looking at different regions. So in China, the small car, it will be price parity by 2025. And then in US, the SUV won't be in price parity until 2026. And the reason why you and I think that this is weird is that we know that certain, quite a number of car models already are, EVs are already a price parity with gas cars. And so we're just trying to understand where these numbers came from it, yeah. and whether or not they're- It's gonna depend how they drew the data set. But in general, the takeaway is by region, you know, in the next couple of years, Europe, yeah. Europe, China, and North America are going to reach price parity across a number of different vehicle sets, not just the three and Y, or, but across a number of different vehicle types. And then India is going to take a lot longer. And that's one of the yeah. reasons you didn't see a big move into India two or three years ago is because of this chart. Let's go on. And this is a final chart, which I absolutely love. This is it. This is another good one. <laughs> and the question that we've asked everybody, which is at what point, what percentage of EVs will of cars sold will be electric vehicles by 2030? And you can see that different people, different organizations have different estimates. OPEC, the <laughs> gas uh, countries, they believe that it's only going to be 10%. <laughs> the oil view, 10% of uh, market share will be electric vehicles globally, which is already past that. So it's kind of weird why they think that that's the case. And you can see here that uh, Raymond James and others is going to be over 50%. And then this is kind of all these other kind of analysts, I think it's much lower. I think these numbers are way lower than I expect. It's going to be way over 50% um, by that point. And again, if you go back to this original chart that we looked at here, you know, by 2030, even if you look at the fastest, the sixty-two percent is what they this RMI is thinking is going to be um, all right at that point. So, what's your thoughts on that final chart, Jeff? This is why Tesla is focused on on driving cogs down so intently. So you don't you won't need the government incentives right now. Oil and gas and EVs and hybrids and hydrogen all have some sort of set of incentives behind them. But I could see politically, um, not only in the U.S., but even abroad, where that that could grow, you know, people could grow weary of that, of constantly putting incentives behind that. And you can see some of those wear off. And that's why, you know, Elon was on record, I think, at a Wall Street Journal conference last year saying, you know, don't pass the IRA. He goes, we don't need it. And, and, the, and the interviewer was like, well, what about superchargers? Do you need money for superchargers? He goes, do we... You know, do we um, do we fund gas stations from the government here? No, just just l let it alone. Let the free market work. EV, you know, a Tesla again without the IRA incentives today, you know, kind of blending those charts together can can be below. It's already at price parity and below what its gas counterparts are. So I like the, to your point is I do think they're undercalling EV adoption because once the prices are lower. The performance and product are better and the education is out there of like hey you're not going to run out of electricity you're not going to your car's not going to stop and it's just not going to happen that way i think the adoption curves people will will gravitate to where the better performing uh product is so i, I do think they're under called and that opec number being you know at 12 percent, they probably have the highest advertising budget so that's where a lot of disinformation actually comes from exactly you know, I'm going to go ahead and pin a video that Jeff and I just did uh, that's talking about how institutional firms, in this case, Morgan Stanley, views the Q3, Q4, and next year as well. Thank you so much, Jeff. I appreciate you. Follow him on X at the Jeff Lutz. Thanks, everybody.